Since the LAPD was established, there have been many crimes that they have investigated. One of the more infamous crimes that the LAPD investigated was the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. These conflicts affected Simpson, the victim's families, the African American community, and the community at large. When the dust cleared, the outcome of the trial set a seemingly guilty man free. Orenthal James Simpson, also known as O.J. Simpson, was a major celebrity in the National Football League. Initially, he played for USC and then was picked in the first round in the NFL Draft. He played for the Buffalo Bills from 1969 to 1977 and for the San Francisco 49ers from 1978 to 1979. After his retirement, he decided to become an actor. This choice kept him relevant in the media. Therefore, people were still interested in his life after his career. His reputation affected the O.J. Simpson trial, as people were appalled at the shocking allegations he faced in the courtroom. O.J.'s arrest began a series of conflicts during the O.J. Simpson trial. 13, 1994, Simpson's ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ronald Goldman were found slaughtered outside her Brentwood condominium. OJ, who had flown to Chicago that same night, had to return to Los Angeles for questioning. Simpson was enraged that he was a suspect and, failing to surrender, began an infamous police chase in a white Bronco. During the slow chase down the 405 freeway, the trailing policemen were relaying to the department that OJ Simpson is in this vehicle. One report says he has a gun pointed to his head, says he will not be taken alive, and wants to be taken to see his mother. While in the car, he spoke to the police by phone and threatened to kill himself and requested to talk to his mother. The police complied and followed him to his house to see his mother. He was arrested inside his house where the media could not see and was charged with two counts of murder. <laughs> Approximately a month later, jury selection began in a criminal case. The jury that was chosen was composed of 12 people. The jury was made up of 10 women and 2 men whose average age was 43, with the ethnic makeup consisting of 9 African Americans, 2 Caucasians, and 1 Hispanic. The ethnic makeup of this jury created a conflict due to the fact that many believed that the majority of African American people felt O.J. Simpson was not guilty, while the majority of non-African American people felt he was guilty. Compromise began with the DNA found at the murder scene and the belief that it belonged to O.J. Simpson. This created a lot of controversy and doubt from all of O.J.'s supporters. During the trial, the defense claimed that the LAPD planted the evidence found at the crime scene, which caused still more conflict. In addition, prosecutors Deputy District Attorney Marcia Clark and Christopher A. Darden released several documents that detailed various types of abuse of Nicole Simpson at the hands of O.J. Simpson. Has he threatened you? The abuse include physical, verbal, and economic abuse from Nicole. On January 24th, the opening statements began with 24-hour video coverage broadcast on television. During the trial, Simpson hired Johnny Carcon Jr. to assist in his defense. Carcoran's opening statement was completed shortly after Simpson hired him. In response to the opening statement, Nicole's sister, Denise Brown, expressed that O.J. humiliated and abused her sister. This testimony supported the defense's evidence of abuse at the hands of O.J. Simpson. On February 12th, the jurors took a tour of Simpson's home and other key locations important to the case. Officer Robert Risk from the LAPD reported that some evidence wasn't photographed, which appeared extremely suspicious. This conflict led to the defense and the jurors to believe that the LAPD may be hiding evidence. Cochran's claim was that the LAPD mishandled the investigation and possibly tampered with evidence. Instead of focusing on Simpson's innocence, Cochran focused on how the LAPD mishandled the investigation, which formed reasonable doubt in the jurors' minds. Using this argument, he made the LAPD look incompetent and stupid. Cochran called several LAPD officers and detectives to the stand during the trial. There was one man that helped the defense immensely due to his past and audio recordings. He was Mark Furman. The defense argued that he was a racist and he planted the leather glove to implicate Simpson in the murder. During questioning, Furman denied the allegations of being a racist and interfering with evidence. You say on your oath that you have not addressed 
any black person as a or spoken about black people as in the past 10 years, Detective Furman. That's what I'm saying, sir. On May 8th, Selmark Diagnostics Lab Director Robin Cotton proved that the DNA results from the crime scene matched O.J. Simpson's genetic makeup. Through many calculations, he stated that there is only a small amount of people on Earth that match this exact genetic makeup. These blood samples came from the bloody gloves, the white bronco, a pair of socks in O.J.'s bedroom, and on the driveway of his house. The blood in these items all contain blood with Simpson's genetic makeup. For all of these items to contain blood from a different person with O.J.'s same genetic makeup was very slim, and the evidence was very compelling. This evidence was a victory in the prosecutor's argument, making it more likely that the jury's compromise would be favorable to their side. Approximately one month later during the trial, at the request of the prosecution, Simpson tried on the leather glove in the courtroom. Your Honor, at this time, the people would ask that Mr. Simpson step forward and try on the, the uh, glove recovered at Bundy as well as the glove recovered at Rockingham. To everyone's astonishment, the glove did not fit. It is believed that there were two main factors that contributed to the gloves not fitting. While trying them on, OJ wore latex gloves, which could have altered how easy the glove fit onto his hand. Second, the blood on the leather gloves would have most likely made the leather shrink, which caused the change in fit. Due to these conditions, when Simpson tried them on, he showed the courtroom that they didn't fit. This is believed to be a pivotal moment in the trial because the defense benefited from it. The defense took advantage and began testifying that the DNA evidence was contaminated and that the LAPD may have planted evidence. Mark Furman didn't help the situation when the defense discovered recordings of Furman making racial slurs and offensive comments about an African American man, which damaged his credibility as an objective police detective. For the first five or six steps. Why? At this point, Furman began pleading the Fifth Amendment, which only made things worse. Detective Furman, uh, was the testimony that you gave at the preliminary hearing in this case completely truthful? I wish to assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. The main question that raised controversy was by Mr. Yulman, a member of the defense team, who asked, uh, Detective Furman, did you? plant or manufacture any evidence in this case. I assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. This implied that he may have planted or manufactured evidence because he avoided the question, raising suspicion. This also intensified the racial conflicts within the African American community, as well as between this community and the police. At the conclusion of the trial, both the defense and prosecutor made their final arguments to try to persuade the jurors to come to a favorable compromise. Marsha Clark shows data and stated that it was seemingly impossible that someone else murdered Nicole and Ronald due to all of the evidence that's shown. I don't have to say anything else. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the people of the state of California, because we have proven beyond a reasonable doubt, far beyond a reasonable doubt, that the defendant committed these murders we ask you to find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree of Ronald Goldman and Nicole Brown. Thank you very much. On the other hand, Cochran attempts to persuade the jury by reminding them that the leather glove did not fit OJ and said the now famous line, If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. The jury deliberated on the evidence and came to a compromise in a very short four hours. The final compromise was that Simpson was acquitted on both counts of murder. Though the jury brought a compromise to Simpson's fate, a compromise wasn't reached throughout the community. The legacy of the O.J. Simpson trial left the African American community in shambles due to the racial conflict the Simpson case stirred. The community was torn on whether to believe he was guilty or not. Only O.J. Simpson knows. Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson.